Good morning. Welcome to St. George's by the River. I am the Reverend Jeffrey Roy. I am rector here at St. George's, and I welcome you on this fifth Sunday of Lent. For those of you who are participating online, you can download a copy of our service leaflet from our website. Simply go to stgeorgesrumson.org or Google St. George's Rumson and click on the Worship With Us tab and then on Service Bulletins. And there you can download all of this weekend's bulletins. <clears throat> Because we are in Lent, the order of service is a little bit different, and we begin this morning with the Decalogue, <coughs> excuse me, or Ten Commandments. Uh, thank you all for joining us here in person and online, and now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Bless the Lord, who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt bear, not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Jesus said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and merciful Father, we have, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. sheep. We, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have, we have offended against thy holy laws. laws. We, we have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest and desire that which thou dost promise, that so, 
Among the sundry and manifold changes of this world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Together, let us read Psalm 119, verses 9 through 16, found on page 4 in the bulletin, and also on page 764 in the Book of Common Prayer. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By, By keeping, keeping to your words. words. With, With my, my whole heart, heart I seek you. you. Let, Let me not stray from your commandments. commandments. I, I treasure your promise in my heart, that I may not sin against you. you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. With my lips will I recite all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your decrees than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you, as he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications. With loud cries and tears, to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor, now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? 
Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw, draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. We wish to see Jesus. Me too. Have you seen Jesus? Have you seen him at all in the past year? Or at any point in time recently have you been able to see Jesus? In the past month, week, or even in the last day? Now, unlike the Greeks in the Gospel passage, I am obviously not asking if you have physically seen Jesus. Although I did find a BuzzFeed list online this morning, or this week, of 22 people who found the face of Jesus in their food. People have found his image in bread, potato chips, Cheetos, even on a fish stick. Maybe the better question for us this morning is, where have you seen Jesus in the people and world around you, particularly in the past year in this time of pandemic? But the Greeks in today's passage, they want to meet the Jesus. And then there's this odd game of telephone. The Greeks tell Philip, Philip tells Andrew, and then the two of them go to tell Jesus. And what does Jesus say? Yes, no, maybe. You know, maybe if I have the time kind of busy with this whole earthly ministry thing, maybe I'll go meet them later. Jesus gives a non-answer. The hour has come. It makes me wonder if some Greeks asking to meet him is the sign that he was waiting for. Maybe some Greeks asking to meet him at this moment clarifies everything for him. Well, maybe not for Jesus, who I assume understands what he is, who he is, and what's about to happen. But maybe this is the moment when it becomes crystal clear for his followers and for us. Maybe in this moment, it became clear that Jesus' ministry, that the kingdom of God is for the world, the whole world. Jesus' proclamation that the kingdom has come near is not just for his disciples, not just for his extended group of followers, not just for the Jews in Israel or Jerusalem of that point in time, but Jesus' proclamation about the kingdom come near is for the entire world. Greeks, Roman, Gentiles, the kingdom of God has come into the world. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about the temple and the Holy of Holies, the Sanctum Sanctorum, the place where God resides on earth. 
What Jesus is saying this morning in this passage is that God has left the building. That God resides in God's kingdom. And that kingdom has come into the world, our world, through God's Son, Jesus. But there seems to be a caveat that the only way to reach the entire world seems to be through the cross and resurrection. We preachers have a well-worn cliche that the path to Easter has to go through Good Friday. This is the teaching moment that we heard Jesus have this morning. And it's a tough lesson. Really, there's a number of tough lessons in Jesus' comments. A grain of wheat must die, or else it remains only a single grain. You must lose your life in this world to keep it for eternity. Serve God by following Jesus. Follow Jesus' example. And if we follow Jesus' example, if we serve Jesus and God, then God will honor us. This is what it takes to see Jesus. And Jesus makes it very clear this morning that there will be some pain involved. There will be death involved. It had to have been hard to hear when Jesus spoke these words. Perhaps it's hard for us to hear this morning. But throughout his earthly ministry, time and time again, Jesus tells his disciples that ultimately he will die. And not in the way that we all will die, hopefully at some future date. But Jesus tells him time and again that for the things he is proclaiming to happen, he needs to die sooner rather than later. And his followers struggle with that, which is understandable. They have seen his power. They have seen the miraculous healings. They have seen Lazarus brought back from the dead. They have seen the crowds following him. And yet he still talks about his pending death. Because they don't know yet how the story ends. My favorite parts of the Gospels are those parts where Jesus reveals his very humanness where Jesus acts in ways that are decidedly un-Jesus-like. I think that I like the thought of a Jesus having some humanness, and it also helps me to see truth in the gospel. And even here, it seems as if in a moment of vulnerability, Jesus is a little worried. Maybe he's even a little bit afraid. Now my soul is troubled. This is not like that night in Gethsemane when he prays so hard to have the cup taken from him. But it seems to be close that Jesus, in the midst of all of this, is struggling. That maybe he's having second thoughts about what he's been called to do. And yet he still is determined to follow the path laid out for him. And it is at this moment of his vulnerability that God speaks out. Now Jesus says it's not for his benefit, but these must have been some words of comfort to him facing 
his time of trial. Jesus tells the crowd that the words from God were for their sake. And maybe God speaks to them so that they can more clearly understand who Jesus really is. That these words of God are an underlining of Jesus' words or an exclamation point to his teaching. That Jesus, that the kingdom has come into our world. That's, to me, the important part of the passage this morning. Jesus makes it clear that what he's doing is not for himself. It's not just for his friends and his followers. Not just for the believers in this small, dusty, Roman backwater of the Middle East. But it is for the world. The world, the judgment of the world, the ruler of the world will be driven out. Jesus will draw all people to himself. What, is he, what do we say during communion at times? Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my new covenant poured out for you and for all. Lent is a time of looking for Jesus. We know that Jesus is here, even though he can be hard to find. But where can we find him? We find him in the world. Now, unlike the Greeks from today's Gospels, we can't really physically see Jesus. But perhaps the best we can do is to see the evidence of Jesus in the lives and actions of those who care for God's people, in the breaking of bread, and maybe most importantly, we can find Jesus in the faces of one another, God's, God's own beloved sons and daughters. Amen. Amen. Standing together, let us say the Nicene Creed found on page six in the bulletin and on page 326 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all that, that is, is seen and unseen. We, we believe, believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the, the only, only Son of God, God eternally God begotten of the Father, Father God, God from God, God light from light, light True God, God from true God, God begotten, begotten not, not made, of, of one being with the Father. Through, through him, him all things were made. For us, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these, our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, hear Hear our prayer. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and Chip, our bishop, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy, hear hear our our prayer. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, and Phil, our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in thy mercy, hear Hear our prayer. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Christy, Bill, Jim, Mary, Lee, Eileen, Karen, David, Allie, Jerry, Robin, Amanda, Carrie, John, William, Tristan, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Let us also remember in our prayers all veterans and all who have given their lives in service to our country and those serving in our armed forces. John, Tim, Nicole, Andrew, Darren, Joseph, Jamie, Matthew E., Matthew V., Larry, and all others. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our our prayer. Sustain, O Christ, the Church of England, that it may reflect thy glory and follow wheresoever thou leadest. Lord, in thy mercy, hear hear our prayer. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord always be with you. And with thy spirit. Please be seated. Just a few announcements for this morning. Um, Again, you'll look at your bulletin. I think over half of the pages in this morning's bulletin are all announcements. So take it home because I'm obviously not going to go through everything here. Mm -hmm. Um, Just a reminder, again, that also all of that can be found online in our Dragon Paws email or the email that I copy up to the website uh, every week as well. Um, I do draw your attention to the uh, Easter flower form to get those in to Debbie uh, this week so she can start to work on those bulletins. Uh, We are continuing our two Lenten adult eds, although we are wrapping up our Friday program this week on Les Mis, and Kijé has a couple of weeks left on Wednesday night for our ladies' Bible study where they are looking at the book of Esther, right? Yes. Okay, all right. Um, the information for both programs is in the uh, bulletin. The big thing I think that, I, that you need to know is on the back of your bulletin uh, this morning, and that is the list of our Holy Week and Easter services. 
The main point I want to make is that if you are planning on attending for Easter Sunday, a reservation is absolutely required. Um, so please go online. The services are live, although I would imagine for this group that that 7.30 service will not have people busting you know, out the doors at this early in the morning. But if you're planning or coming later, please uh, go online and register. And also, if you know of someone who isn't online or is not computer savvy, you can either make the reservation for them or direct them to call me or Debbie in the office. And I am reserving some seats for people who are not online. So that um, I, I want to make sure that as many people who want to come are able to come on Easter Sunday. Uh, so please register, um, and uh, we, will, we will all be, uh, it'll be an unusual Easter. It's an, un it's an unusual time. Um, and we'll get through it, though, and we'll celebrate. Um, and again, communion this morning will be in one kind only, and we will bring it down to you in the pew. Thank you all. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up as a sacrifice unto God. The Lord be with you. With thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father Almighty, everlasting God, who dost bid thy faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that fervent in prayer, in works of mercy, and renewed by thy word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which thou hast prepared for those who love thee. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of thy glory. glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Let us now say together the prayer for spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with, with your faithful, faithful people, people at every, every altar, altar of, of your church, church where, where the, the Holy, Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, celebrated we desire to offer you praise, praise and thanksgiving we remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since as the church together, we cannot all receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to also come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. 
Eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. Almighty and ever-living God, we, we most, most heartily thank, thank Thee for that, that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporates in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.